The story of how the Mary Fletcher Hospital came to be built is a story of extraordinary people working together to realize a common dream. At the center of the story is Mary Martha Fletcher and her parents, Thaddeus and Mary. It was her father's fortune that provided the financing for the dream, but it was his frail and unassuming daughter who made it a reality. Because the history of the Mary Fletcher Hospital is closely tied to the University of Vermont's College of Medicine, our story begins in the final decade of the 18th century. Vermont became a state in 1791, the same year in which the State University was established. The following year, a young doctor named John Pomeroy moved to Burlington from Cambridge, Vermont with his wife and three children. At first, they lived in a log cabin, but six years later, he built the first brick house in town. This handsome home actually played an important part in the history of medical education in Vermont. It was here that Dr. Pomeroy began instructing students in the art of medicine about the year 1800. It was his dream to see a medical school become a part of the new university on the hill. He assembled a faculty of five professors and formal lectures began on the top floor of UVM's only building in 1822. In 1829, a building was erected on the south end of College Green for the sole use of the medical department. But difficult times lay ahead. In 1836, the medical department had to cease operations due to lack of students. Only one student graduated that year. It was not until the year 1854 that this department was revived under the leadership of Dr. Samuel White Thayer. Among the physicians elected to the medical faculty at this time was Dr. Walter Carpenter, then age 46, professor of Materia Medica and Therapeutics. This able physician served on the faculty for 28 years and also played a pivotal role in the establishment of the Mary Fletcher Hospital. In 1876, the Vermont General Assembly authorized the medical societies of the state to license practitioners of medicine, marking the beginning of the modern age of medicine. The same year, Governor Horace Fairbanks signed the papers for the incorporation of the state's first nonprofit hospital in Burlington. The establishment of this hospital fulfilled a long-standing wish of the philanthropic Fletcher family of Jericho, Vermont. Thaddeus and Mary Fletcher told their physician, Dr. Walter Carpenter, that they wanted to endow a hospital with part of their substantial estate. Both died before they could carry out this desire, and the task fell to their daughter, Mary Martha, who pursued it with single-minded devotion. The history of the Mary Fletcher Hospital is the history of modern medicine in Vermont, asserts Rest Orton in his account of the first general hospital in the state and in northern New England. Miss Fletcher donated $150,000 for the purchase of the land, construction, and endowment of the hospital, and added $50,000 to that amount when cost overruns necessitated more money. Named for her mother, the hospital was one of less than 200 general hospitals in the country at that time. The building process was managed by Dr. Carpenter, who sought input from the medical staff for the organization of the medical and surgical staff, as well as the construction of the medical and surgical wings. W.P. Wentworth, a Boston architect who was born in Vermont, designed the building which was located on a hill behind the university. The 29-bed facility was surrounded by 35 acres of farmland and opened in January 1879. The hospital included a three-story brick building, a separate men's ward, and a connected amphitheater for clinical instruction. Shortly after the Mary Fletcher Hospital opened its doors to the public, Dr. Walter Carpenter spelled out his views about the proper mission of the hospital. A hospital is essentially a charity. It's an institution whose main object is not the making of money, but rather the cure of the sick, the feeble, and the injured. It aims to bring the benefits of the most advanced medical science, the most skillful nursing, and the most favoring material and moral conditions to the relief of the suffering of all classes. 
After she had accomplished her goal of opening a school of nursing at the Mary Fletcher Hospital, Mary Martha became more withdrawn from the affairs of the world. The account of her final hours read as follows in the Burlington Free Press. The closing scene in Miss Fletcher's life was especially touching. As soon as she became aware that her end was near, she desired to be taken to the hospital. Though informed by her physician, Dr. Carpenter, that the removal would be attended with extreme danger, she would not be refused. Taken up from her bed in the arms of her faithful attendant, she was conveyed in a sleigh to the hospital and laid upon the bed in her own room where no one but herself had ever rested. And there, murmuring thanks that she was where she was, in a very brief space, she breathed her life gently away. Today, the Mary Fletcher Hospital has been restored to its original appearance. Although it no longer serves as a hospital, it houses the offices of the Departments of Medicine and Surgery. More than just a historic building, the Mary Fletcher Hospital is a memorial to the altruistic men and women who had the vision, the knowledge, and the means to make it a reality nearly 130 years ago.